Hey guys, good morning. How is everybody? All right, I'm gonna skip the intro, let's get going. You ready to conquer the real estate exam? Welcome to realestateexamninja.com where I have helped thousands of people pass the real estate exam. You're not on this journey alone. Check out the website, realestateexamninja.com. All right, number one, money compensating a lawyer when a buyer defaults on a contract is known as what? All right, money compensating, okay, a seller, I don't know why I said lawyer. Money compensating a seller when a buyer defaults, defaults on a contract is known as what? What do you guys think? Liquidated damages, actual damages, escrow funds, earnest money. What do you guys think it is? All right, so the answer is liquidated damages. Liquidated damages, not earnest money, are awarded by the court. Typically, they are numerally equivalent, okay? All right, so if you guys check it out uh, on realestateexamininja.com, not only do we tell you uh, when you get it wrong, but we have an explanation why you get it wrong so you don't get it wrong again. You just learn it one time. All right, question number two. A lease that provides for periodic increases of rent at regular intervals is called a what? A graduated lease? Yearly lease, long-term lease, or a percentage lease? All right, so if we are at regular intervals, maybe it's once a year, boom, boom, boom. All right, what do you guys think? Oh, I shouldn't have said yearly, because it could be monthly, it could be bi-yearly, it could be many things. All right, so number, let's see what it is, and it is a graduated lease, a long-term Lease agreement which provides for a fixed rental fee during the initial period of the lease with increases and or decreases in rental amount at stated times. Okay. All right, when a contract states that time is of the essence, I feel like every contract says that. What do you guys think? The contract must be delivered and presented. So there's no time frame. Time is of the essence just kind of means Time is of the essence. It's important. We got to do it fast. We got to do it, you know, as quick as we can. So, yeah, I mean, if it says 48 hours, then it obviously means 48 hours. But, you know, time is of the es essence is pretty, pretty vague. Okay. Next. In April, Jones accepted an offer to sell his house to Brown. In June, Brown paid the purchase price and received a deed to the house and the keys. After June, their contract was considered to be what? What do you guys think? Implied, liquidated, executed, or void? So it sounds like the contract's over, right? It sounds like we've executed the contract and everything's been fulfilled. As everything's been promised and the contract's over. So we've executed it, it's, it's a done deal. When a buyer withdraws his offer to purchase real property prior to acceptance by the seller, the buyer is entitled to a refund, broker may sue for specific performance, seller may sue the buyer for specific performance, seller is entitled to one half of the earnest money. All right, when the buyer withdraws his offer to purchase real property acceptance by the seller, prior to acceptance by the seller. Um, so I think that's the key word here, prior. Um, if the seller has not accepted the offer, there's no contract, right? So nobody's, nobody can sue anybody, there's, there's no problem. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense uh, to you guys. Um, but yeah, basically, if the owner has not accepted, you know, there's there's no issue. The issue comes when the buyer and seller make an agreement, they have a written contract, and then people start uh, backing out and doing things, uh, you know, making problems. In which of the following situations could a broker receive no commission? All right, so let's take a look at these. The broker proves that he is, uh, let's see, procuring cause of the buyer an exclusive, 
The buyer proves that he is procuring cause of buyer in an open listing. The buyer proves he is procuring cause uh, the buyer in an exclusive agency listing. The buyer proves he is procuring cause of the buyer in a net listing. Okay. Um, this one's a little higher level. This one's a little tricky. Do you guys know? All right. Um, an exclusive right to sell. The, briar, the broker could receive no commission. Um, all right, I, I'm having trouble remembering this one. Um, okay, the procuring cause, okay, in all of the other listings, if the broker proves that he is the procuring cause, they would earn a commission. However, a net listing is an employment contract in which the broker receives as commission all excess monies over and above the minimum sales price. Therefore, if he brings in an offer at or below the sales price, then he would get no commission. Huh. That's a high level one. Um, so if this is on my website, realisticexamination.com, that means someone has seen this on the test. Uh, but I can tell you that's not my experience. Uh, this is, it's a pretty high level. Um, maybe if you're studying for the broker's exam, this is one that you need to know. But uh, for studying for the normal real estate exam to be an agent, I would not put a lot of weight on this one. A township contains how many sections? What do you guys think? 16, 12, 36, or 30? I'm gonna close my eyes, pick at random. I don't know. This is gonna be on your exam 100%, by the way. A township is 36 square miles and contains 36 sections. The prospective purchaser may withdraw the offer at any time before the seller's acceptance of an offer, provided the offer is not, su not supported by a deposit, unless the offer states that it is, it is irrevocable for any reason, or provided the offeree has breached the offer. The prospective purchaser may withdraw the offer at any time before the seller's acceptance of an offer. Um, for, you know, it's it, pretty much any reason, right? So for any reason, we can take back our offer if the seller has not accepted the offer. I think we touched on that earlier. Uh, the primary purpose of a listing agreement is to what? Give the broker permission to sell all the properties, um, list all improvements and amenities of the property, serve as a contract of employment between the owner and the broker, serve as a guide for a sales contract. So the purpose of a listing agreement, it's a employment contract between you and the broker. So he's not doing all this, you know, they're not doing all this work for free. Uh, you guys don't wanna go out and market a house and do all these things and you don't have a listing agreement so there's nothing you can do to get paid if they decide not to pay. Um, so yeah, it's a formative employment agreement. All right, the seller grants a potential buyer the right to purchase the property within a period of time for a predetermined price. A seller grants a potential buyer the right to purchase a property within a period of time for, for a predetermined price. This is called what? A purchase agreement, a land contract, an installment agreement, an option. It sounds to me, um, let's use the common sense here, that the seller is giving the buyer an option to do something, right? So if we're just, you know, throw a little common sense here, it's an option. So I tell you guys, you guys don't have to know every single thing if you can just, you know, use some process of elimination and common sense on these questions. Uh, you, can, you can get them right. If a buyer builds an outbuilding that violates his CCRs, he, may be sued and required to pay damages, is safe from legal actions taken by other residents, may be sued and required to alter the structure, um, may forfeit the title of the property immediately. What do you guys think? All right, so if it violates the CCRs, All right, so 
violating the CCR is grounds for all you got to alter or remove the structure okay a promise in exchange for a promise a promise in exchange for a promise is considered is by consideration is the basis for a let's see a promise in exchange for a promise a val let's see a multilateral okay I believe this is going to be this one's a little high level two and yeah okay so it's a valid binding bilateral agreement okay so we're talking a promise for a promise there's two people buy right bicycle two wheels um, again that's when I was not I could not remember 100%, but using the process of elimination on these multiple choice questions, you're able to back into the answer. Okay? The guys, what is an option? We already we already touched on this, but options are going to be on the exam. An option requires the option need to purchase the property to complete the purchase. No. It it does not. Does it make the seller liable for commission? No, it does not. It gives the option E an easement to the property. No, it does not. Requires option consideration. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Under a lease, the leasehold interest lies in the what? Beneficiary, lessor, lessee, landlord. The leasehold interest. All right. So... Man, this is uh, in the leasehold interest. I get confused on these, and you and, and you probably <laughs> excuse me. All right, so it's not. I know it's not the beneficiary. Okay, the leasehold interest. I believe the landlord and the lessor is basically the same thing. So I'm going to eliminate these two, and I'm going to eliminate this one. That leaves me with the lessee, okay? Again, guys, it's not just about memorizing this stuff. You can destroy these types of exams if you can just do process of elimination. Bingo. All right, so a leasehold interest is the right to exclusive possession and use of the real property for a fixed period of time held by the lessee. Remember, lessee, landlord, Let's eat tenant. I'm sorry, guys. My nose, I know I probably look like some kind of drug addict right now. My nose is itching so bad. I think it's got allergies. All right. To assign a contract for the sale of real estate means to allow the seller and the buyer to exchange positions, record the contract with the county recorder's office, transfer one's rights under the contract, Permit another broker to act as an agent for the principal. Okay, let me. So let, let's walk through this. To assign a contract for the sale of real estate. That means to to assign a contract. All right. If we're assigning a contract, we're not um, we're not exchanging positions. That would be weird, right? The buyer can't become the seller. Like that's that's weird. So let's knock that one off. To record the contract with the county recorder's office. Um you know, depending on the county, some counties you don't record contracts, okay? That really doesn't make sense in this context. If you're assigning a contract, I'm it's like you're giving something, right? So I'm transferring the rights of, like, my rights of the contract to someone else. Does that make sense? So we're transferring it. We're assigning it. We're transferring it. Yeah, I hope, I hope that makes sense. All right. During the term of an exclusive authorization and right to sell listing, the broker has his license revoked by the Bureau of Real Estate. To prove that he is entitled to a commission, he must prove all of the following with the exception, that's the important word here, with the exception of what? 
All right, with the exception. I So I got to think about this. So he was licensed at the time of commission. Um, what does he? What does he not have to prove? All right, he has to prove he was licensed. He has to prove the buyer and seller agreed to a sale during the listing term. Okay. He has to prove the listing was a legally binding agreement, okay. But what he does not have to prove is this one. The broker was the procuring cause of the sale. That does not matter in this, in this circumstance. That's correct. The question provides lots of irrelevant information. Under an exclusive authorization and right to sell listing, the broker is entitled to a commission regardless of who sells the property. All right, guys, I hope this helped. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to hit you with another video tomorrow. All right, see you guys. Bye.